but will be crossing over to Germany because President Ekofuado is in that country dealing with various official duties there. Among the events there is his visit to the drug manufacturer Pfizer, signing of a pact with German authorities on some economic corporations, among others. This morning, he had attended a ceremony in Düsseldorf, Germany, where he delivered a speech as part of the 75th anniversary celebrations of North Rhine Westphalia, Germany. He used the occasion to work more German manufacturing companies to follow the example of car maker Volkswagen to set up in Ghana. We in Ghana are drawing inspiration from the success stories of North Rhine, Westphalia and Germany. Because likewise, we want to build a progressive and prosperous country. There's an often cited African proverb which says, and I quote, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. We have resolved to work hand in hand with North Rhine, Westphalia and Germany because we desire to walk far especially as we share common attachments to the common values of respect for individual liberties and human rights, of respect for the rule of law, and of respect for the principles of democratic accountability. Embarking on such a journey means we are having to accelerate the process of changing the structure of the Ghanaian economy, which will enable us to participate fully in the global marketplace, not on the basis of exports of raw materials, but on the basis of the exports of things we make. With Germany being a major exporter of industrial products and technology, with North Rhine-Westphalia being in the lead, Ghana's relations with Germany are of utmost importance and must be hinged on this. The recent establishment of a Volkswagen assembly plant in Accra is a welcome development, and we are encouraged by the fact that more and more German companies have expressed their willingness to set up shop in Ghana. We want to renew and deepen our relations with Germany, with North Rhine-Westphalia at her center, to our mutual advantage. We do want to and we shall work to take Ghana to where she deserves to be, a prosperous and dynamic member of the world community, which is neither victim nor pawn of the world order. Ghana is doing her part in leading the march for the development of Africa. It is an exciting time for us, and we welcome, we welcome residents and enterprises of North Rhine-Westphalia, and indeed of Germany as a whole, to, to join us to achieve this goal. The event happened uh, yesterday, but so how have such investments in the past fed? How have Ghanaians or how can Ghanaians take full advantage of the inflows instead of opposing it? Um, joining us for a conversation is Kofi Apia Domanko. He's West Africa Regional Director for CATS International, a research and public policy think tank. Good to see you, Mr. Adomanko. Yeah, good to see you, but just my name is Apia Kusi Adomanko. Kofi it's not my name. Okay, Kusi is Kusi rather. I'm yes. sure it was a typo. Okay, so Kusi appear at Domako. But the other is appear Kusi at Domako, just for the. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Okay. Yeah, thanks for the correction. But let's look at this whole investment. We, we should be happy that our president is going door to door looking for people to come and invest in our country, first of all. Yes, I think it's something that all Ghanaians should be happy about it, mm. at least. There's going to be a job creation for the teaming Ghanaians who find it difficult to get a job after university. Okay. How can we take advantage of uh, this uh, kind of um, environment that the president is trying to create for us? Okay. So if we take, for example, the automobile industries that have started producing cars here, brand new cars, mm. But you realize that there's still a huge appetite for used cars from the U.S. and other parts of the world simply because uh, most Ghanaians' income uh, cannot afford to buy uh, brand new cars here. Okay. And for us to be able to take advantage of it, it requires that one, the level of uh, salary in Ghana goes up. But of course, salary can go up when you have product productivity also, I mean, productivity and salary are two parallel things. 
Okay. They move uh, par with each other. And so Ghanaians can only take advantage of all these things if only our salaries and our income level is such that people would prefer to buy a brand new car than to buy a used vehicle. Mm. But, but what does all of this mean to our unemployment, unemployment situation? I mean, over the years, we've been complaining about how the youth uh, finished their university education and they are home, no jobs and what have you. If we have this opportunity of people investing in our country, what does this mean for our unemployment situation? So I think there, there's going to be a, a domino effect. Mm. For example, if we were to hear that Amazon uh, were to select Ghana as their operations in Africa, okay. a lot of businesses are going to also come to Ghana and build their business around Amazon coming here. Yeah. Likewise, if we have other uh, German investors coming here to do business, others will also follow up. Mm. So you may not necessarily be working directly with the German firm that is on the broad front page headline, but other firms that are coming, financial institutions, insurance companies, and other even hospitals to serve the German uh, expert would also be set up. And nurses and doctors and cleaners will all find jobs. And so there's going to be a ripple effect of all these things that the president is doing. So I think uh, we should lord the president. But so also do you also need to ensure that uh, jobs are created, the income level. Of mm. course, we are still a low income and middle middle income country, okay. but realize that the cost of uh, cost of living in Ghana is such that most Ghanaians cannot even afford to buy quality goods, and so you realize that our market is flooded with Second substandard goods from uh, Asia and other other places, mm. and so we need to do more to make Ghanaian, uh, uh, I mean, the Ghanaian worker. Get or the ordinary Ghanaian, yes, get a very decent income. Um, yeah. And I think this is a very complicated question. I, I'm sure government will not be happy if I say this because mm. I mean, increasing the wage, even public sector wage by 10 mm. percent, has a huge consequence of the national budget. But some way, somehow, I think we need to address the issue of wage. Mm. Oh, and of course, how do you uh, think government can address this? Because um, certainly that is uh, where other countries are going, bringing in other people to invest in their countries. How do we improve the living conditions of our, our, our members or our citizens so that we can actually uh, fully benefit from this uh, VWs and all the other companies that will be coming to invest here? Yes, I think when you are able to create jobs and the job starts to pay very uh, well, I think that businesses will also be able to pay their workers a uh, huge uh, income. Okay. I mean, you know, our economy has been buying and selling. Mm. The service sector is kind of very small and as the service sector develops, that is one of the areas where salary level seems to go higher than the, compared to that of the manufacturing sector. Yeah. So gradually we are going there. If you look at the, uh, the data from the Ghana Statistical Service, you realize that uh, the service sector is doing better than even the, the, the real sector. Mm. And of course, we should also be concerned because the service sector, you realize that few people are there. There's the, the sector that employs lots of Ghanaians, the agri sector, the farmers are still uh, impoverished. They can't still get some basic things. They can't even afford to buy, I mean, a secondhand car. And so they still have to uh, buy an old alacha mm. simply because of their income level. So mm. there's a lot that we need to do, but at least Take, get, getting investors here is the first step, mm. but we need also as a country to create the enabling environment so that the investors, when they come, they can stay here. And then also Ghanaian business, Ghanaians will be able to earn an income mm. to be able to buy those products. That, mm. uh, but I also want to say that most of the time when president goes and get investors, foreign investors, mm. they are also giving some tax in incentives. But a Ghanaian investor who is struggling, because the German investor may borrow at 2% or 1% in his country. But you, you are in Ghana and you, you borrow at 25%. 
and you are not even getting any tax incentive from your government, but the mm. foreigner who is coming is getting tax incentive. Mm. And so we need to ensure that there's a kind of a level playing field for businesses, uh, regardless of which country that they are coming from. Mm. Because for me, I'm very much concerned that the SMEs in Ghana are the most driving force of our economy. Because yeah. whenever they make profit, all their profit stays in the country. Mm -hmm. But the for multinationals, all profits are repatriated. Some of these people come even for 10 years, they don't even pay taxes. Mm -hmm. They don't even pay corporate taxes. Okay. Or they pay very minimal. Mm -hmm. And so we should also have a uh, focus our attention on the private sector here, the already Ghanaian SMEs, mm -hmm. such that the, uh, they can work here, produce, uh, create job, and then their income will stay here. And then there wouldn't be so much pressure on the city because mm -hmm. During the first quarter of the year, of every year, when multinationals have declared their dividends, mm. at that time they transfer all their earnings back home, and that put pressure on the city. Okay. And we can do, we can contain this tide if we also invest heavily in our own local domestic champions, okay. such that they will not uh, repatriate their earnings, but rather it will stay here. They will build the malls, they will build the hospitals, and they will build the institutions, and Ghanaians will live on them. Mm. I'm much more interested in um, upgrading the living conditions of the Ghanaian so that they can at least purchase a brand new car instead of a home used one, or uh, they, they can buy standard goods, not substandard. Now, um, the, the bit about um, the cars elsewhere, you get people just walking into showrooms and picking a vehicle and they are giving a, a period of time to pay for it. I mean, you use your car for some time and you want to change, you just walk in and present that car and buy a new one. And sometimes even the, it's the people who are following the, the people to come and buy new cars, oh, just come and pick the new car. You have a period of time to pay for it. I mean, how do we also get to that stage, that system, so that it's not like you are just going to carry so much cash and go and purchase a brand new car, but there's a system, there's something that works for you as a worker. Okay. Thank you very much. I think 15 years ago, we didn't have shopping malls in Ghana, sure. but today we have more than 10 malls mm. littered across the country. Okay. Now, Ghanaians can now be identified by their uh, unique identifier, that's their Ghana card number, mm. which is also your social security number. Definitely. And so for banks to be able to do this, first, they should be able to establish your identity. Okay. Now, with the digital, I don't, I don't speak for the government, but then with the digitization program that we are doing, very soon financial institutions will be able to get enough data about Ghanaians, mm -hmm. where you are, where you stay, your income level, and other things. Okay. So that based upon that information, you can go to, let's say, a Mercedes or Toyota or whatever, and you say, look, you want to buy this Toyota uh, uh, Highlander, they will just take your ID and just check and say, look, your credit score is very good. Mm -hmm. So they can give that thing to you because the information that they are getting from the system says that you work, you earn on average of, let's say, 10,000 Ghana cities. Mm. So they can take about 4,000 cities monthly. Every month. Yes. Okay. But one thing is this. The problem in Ghana is that in, uh, the, the interest on, on car loans is very high. Mm because of yep. the volatilities on the CD and the dollar mm -hmm. issue. Yep. So there is also one thing, and also government actions also affect how the CD performs. Yeah. And our appetite for foreign goods also add up to the way the CD performs. Mm. And so fix the country, fix the country too. We must also fix things that will also make the CD uh, remain strong mm. so that, I mean, when and in, when uh, uh, banks are giving you a loan, they will know that in two years' time or so, the CD value will still be stable. Because, because of the fear that the CD value is going to depreciate, and most of these financial institutions have also borrowed money from other countries. Okay. That might also, that explains why sometimes you, but I think that we can still do uh, something about the high the high uh, interest rate yeah. we have in this country, mm. and that would also uh, make the cost of borrowing affordable for every uh, because in the in most countries, for example, you can still buy a car and pay for six uh, years, 
with no interest on it. Yes, with no interest on the on the VIG, mm. all because the currency is stable, inflation is also stable. So the money that they are giving to you, they're not going to suffer any loss on, mm. on it. Mm. But I think gradually we need to be able to build our economy in such a way that we can all enjoy these things. Okay, so we posted on our Twitter page and we're asking whether you would buy a brand new vehicle at a slightly higher cost because we know in Ghana, mostly we want to buy home use. But if we want to buy a brand new car and we need to top up that money a little and get a brand new, is that something you would um, embrace? Uh, let's see some of the comments coming. And uh, one is, uh, this one is coming from, okay, it says, if free fuel is included in the Obatampa package, okay. And uh, this one says, yes, it's from, okay, um, Adam Moore. And Mickey says, uh, of course. So uh, people are so interested in this. And of course, um, we've been having that conversation. Ms. Adumako has been talking about how we need to upgrade our living standards. Now, Mark says yes. Uh, Menja says yes. And they're all tweeting at the question we posed. And hashtag, you can also send in your tweet, hashtag the polls. But let me ask you this. There's been a number of times investors will come to set up in the country, at some point they would have to fold up and go back to their country. I mean, partly because of uh, some conditions that is not favorable to them. How does government manage this? Because we as a country also want to cash in on the investors coming in. And as you mentioned earlier, when they make profit, they take it back home. So how do we ensure that we do not lose as a country and then we we'll also try and keep the investors here? Okay, so about two years ago, we were consulted by the World Economic Forum to do a study on investment uh, facilitation in Ghana. Okay. We spoke to majority of foreign firms here, and one of the things that they said was that there's nothing like an aftercare here for foreign investors. Okay. You know, when a, a woman is pregnant, the woman will be going for antenatal. Mm. And then after delivery, he has to go to a postnatal. So if you say that, oh, you've given birth and you're happy, you will not go for postnatal services. You, your child will not be able to get the vaccinations and the thing, and then kwashoko, whatever might even affect your child. Yeah. So most uh, in the past, uh, the GIPC and the government institutions were not focusing on the firms that have come here to give them a very good aftercare. Okay. But for the past uh, couple of years, I think that uh, it has started to improve mm. and so the aftercare mechanism is very very important to be able to follow up on them and know their needs and see how it can be resolved okay and also the the tax i mean the energy situation in two, between 2013 and 16 a lot of businesses uh, moved from here to Cote d'Ivoire mm. because the energy sector the electricity was not reliable and then when it became reliable, the price, the tariff was so, uh, I mean, prohibitive. Mm. And so we were able to resolve our energy crisis and also ensure that the, the business environment uh, is conducive. Because nowadays, almost all countries in Africa are peaceful. So in the days that we were saying that oh, Ghana is the most peaceful country in Africa, that mm. days were the prehistoric, uh, I mean, yeah. Adamic era. Mm. But now people are looking for other indices. So if you fall short on that, Capital is hot, uh, is mobile. It can easily move from here to Cote d'Ivoire. And Cote d'Ivoire has become the net gainer of businesses that are relocating from Ghana. Okay. All right. So um, this is something we'll be looking forward to as our president keep getting people to come in here. And we'll look out for uh, what we can also gain from these investors. But I want to thank you so much, um, Apia Kusia Domako, for joining us for this discussion. He's an investment analyst. But let's take you also live to Berlin, Germany, and speak to Uli Perez with our partners, DW, on the African leaders' uh, visits, as well as events with COVID-19. Thanks so much uh, for your time, Uli. First of all, Germany is hosting at the end of this week an important meeting for Africa and also in particular for Ghana. Can you tell us more about this? German Chancellor Angela Merkel announced she would host this Friday the fourth version of the so-called Compact with Africa conference, 
which groups certain African countries, among them Ghana, with European governments and international organizations such as the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund. The aim of the Compact with Africa program, which was launched under the German G20 presidency in 2017, is to improve the framework conditions for private sector investment and employment opportunities in Africa and through investment funds and reform partnerships promote sustainable economic development. The other African countries taking part in the program are Egypt, Ethiopia, Benin, Burkina Faso, Cote d'Ivoire, Guinea, Rwanda, Senegal, Togo and Tunisia. As Germany struggles with the fourth wave of the pandemic, what is the country doing to combat it? German leaders have introduced new measures to try and curb the rising numbers in infections, which are closely related to the Delta variant of the coronavirus. Basically, those who have been fully vaccinated or have recovered from the virus will be able to enjoy more or less every aspect of public life, like going to museums, the cinema or meeting friends at an indoor restaurant as long as they can provide proof things will be more complicated for those who have not been vaccinated. They will need a negative antigen test, which until now is free for everyone, but which the unvaccinated will have to pay for themselves in the future. The goals of these new measures are twofold. Make sure that public life can continue more or less uninterrupted and increase the pressure on those who have not yet been vaccinated. So, Uli, does this mean that Germany will face a new lockdown? German authorities have promised that they will not introduce new lockdown measures, in particular for those who are fully vaccinated. Around 50 million Germans, or 60% of the population, have now received both jabs. This is more than many countries around the world, but it's still not enough to ensure herd immunity. There is growing concern among political leaders when it comes to younger generations, between the ages of 10 to 49, who have been particularly affected by the new wave of infections and whose vaccination rates are in certain age groups not as high as in the case of older Germans. Many youngsters could also face an even greater risk given the opening of schools after the summer holidays. And that's a reporter from DW giving us update from Berlin. Thank you so much.